Dmitry Shostakovich, festive overture, composed in 1954. There's no reason to speak in half measures. Dmitry Shostakovich was one of the greatest composers of the 20th century, someone who created a body of work under conditions and circumstances that most Westerners can barely fathom. He was born in St. Petersburg in 1906 and died in Moscow in 1975, a few weeks shy of his 69th birthday. The country in which Shostakovich lived for most of his life, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, was also born in St. Petersburg in November of 1917 and also died in Moscow at the age of 74 on December 31st, 1991. Shostakovich lived through the whole Soviet nine yards, from the revolution to Stalin's terror to the space race. That he managed to survive when so many of his fellow citizens did not remains something of a miracle. He wrote music that pleased the state and music that infuriated the state. He wrote a symphony, number 13, that acknowledged the Holocaust at a time when official Soviet doctrine did not. He wrote an opera that almost got him killed. And yet in public, he towed the party line and said, what he was told to say. Through it all, Shostakovich's mind remained his own and his conscience riddled with fear and guilt and self-loathing as it was, was the secret inspiration behind so very much of his music. When he chose to, Shostakovich could write politically correct music, music that followed the prescribed artistic tenets of what was called Soviet socialist realism with its upbeat, optimistic tone and blaring patriotic pretentiousness, works like the festive overture. In 1953, Shostakovich was hired by the Bolshoi Theater in Moscow as a part-time music consultant. Among Shostakovich's duties, was to advise the theater on possible new repertoire and to critique its productions of the classics. In very early November of 1954, the Bolshoi decided it wanted a bit more from its consultant, and management asked Shostakovich to compose a curtain raiser for the orchestra that would celebrate the 37th anniversary of the Russian Revolution on November 7th. Yes, we heard that correctly. Shostakovich was asked to compose what turned out to be a six-minute overture for orchestra some four or five days before it was to receive its premiere. We can safely wager that there was no one else on the planet in 1954, or today for that matter, who could have turned out a work like the festive overture in the two days it took Shostakovich to do so, but Shostakovich himself who was justly famous for his incredible facility in composition. The Festive Overture is just that, a festive, brassy, playful work, one of Shostakovich's most frequently performed compositions. Here's the festive fanfare with which the overture begins. Andrew Norman was born in Grand Rapids, Michigan in 1979, but grew up in Modesto, California. He attended the Yale School of Music, the University of Southern California, and has since emerged as one of the preeminent orchestral composers of his generation. The inspiration for Switch was something close to the heart of many members of Norman's generation, and that is video games. Andrew Norman explains, quote, Switch is a game of control. Each percussion instrument, both in front and behind the orchestra, is a switch that controls other instruments, making them play louder or softer, higher or lower, freezing them in place, and setting them in motion again. The percussion soloist 
dropped into this complex contraption of causes and effects, like the unwitting protagonist of a video game, must figure out the rules of this universe, all while trying to avoid the rewind-inducing missteps that prevent their progress from one side of the stage to the other." Unquote. If the video game analogy is too remote for those whose gaming lives ended with Pac-Man, think pinball instead, with the percussion soloist as the ball, hyperkinetically speeding through the orchestra, bouncing off one set of musical ideas, careening into another, being gleefully and none too gently flipped back and forth by the members of the orchestra. The following excerpt, starting about two minutes and 30 seconds into the piece, gives us an idea of the playful, cartoonish, endlessly inventive exchanges we hear in switch between the percussion and the orchestra. Ludwig van Beethoven, Symphony No. 5 in C minor, Opus 67 of 1808. Beethoven was a deeply troubled man who took much of his inspiration from his own troubled life and rotten health. He took his inspiration as well from his immediate environment, which at the time he composed his Fifth Symphony in 1808 was being shredded like a head of iceberg lettuce by the armies and politics of Napoleonic France. Dangerous times can beget dangerous music, and at the time of its premiere in 1808, Beethoven's Fifth was perceived by his contemporaries as a fearsome, cutting-edge piece of modernist art. In an ideal world, we today would hear it the same way. Sadly, popular culture has so abused, used, and trivialized Beethoven's Fifth that it's something of a challenge to hear it with fresh ears. Its opening four notes, dot, 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 dash, correspond with the Morse code for the letter V. Thus, during World War II, Beethoven's Fifth became symbolic for Allied victory over Germany, V for victory. No small irony, given that the piece was written by a German-born composer. In the 1970s, those opening four notes were used in TV ads for an over-the-counter pain relief medication called Thinkwish. And who can forget a fifth of Beethoven, Walter Murphy's disco arrangement of the first movement of Beethoven's Fifth, which found its way into the soundtrack of the 1977 movie, Saturday Night Fever. It boggles the mind. How many millions of people were first exposed to Beethoven's Fifth through this ear porn? We feel faint. Far from being the stuff of disco arrangements, Beethoven's Fifth Symphony is nothing less than a musical metaphor for violent despair, struggle, hope, and finally triumph. The symphony begins viciously and starkly with a primal hammering theme cast in the dark key of C minor. Over the course of its second and third movements, the key of C major, which represents the light, increasingly asserts itself over the music until, with the impact of a wet towel on a naked derriere, the fourth movement begins and concludes triumphantly in C major. For the depressed, hearing-impaired Beethoven, Music composition became his psychiatrist's couch, a medium through which he could express his deepest fears and emotions and, in a work like the Fifth Symphony, symbolically triumph over the darkness in a manner that he could not in real life. Thank you.